All right, cool. So let's let's talk about um, Wave Five. Um, what's your what's your initial impressions of Wave Five now that you've had a chance to really look at the cards and and see what's see try out some of the gameplay and everything? Are you are you happy with the set? I'm I'm very happy with it. <laughs> I I love the the body uh, with the heads. I think that that's gonna change gameplay drastically. Um, you're definitely gonna have to plan your turn differently than if you're going to eliminate a character and their head's gonna pop off. Um, you're not gonna be able to finish your, your attack for that round the way that you would normally have done uh, because now they've got that untapped character that's kind of saving the day for them. Um, you know, they're gonna get another turn in there. So uh, something different to plan for. I definitely like that aspect of it. I like that we're working into having more star cards be prevalent into the gameplay. I think that's a nice feature. And I think that kind of introducing like the villainous spotlight, the heroic spotlight, so that you can play two more stars of cards. I mean, you're going to see more heroic resolves. You're going to see more even the scores, I think. So I think you're going to see a little different style of gameplay taking place as we move forward into this wave. Um, I'm excited to see that, what other people come up with, and I'm excited to see what else we can uh, transition into now that we kind of have uh, hands-on. It's not quite the same as you're just looking at cards online. I'm definitely more of a hands-on. And once I can lay it out, I think I kind of stumble into things a little differently once I'm laying it out on the table, kind of like that beast deck. Uh, once I laid it out of all the characters and I'm looking at it from a, an overview there and not just scrolling on a page, I'm like, oh, hey, that, well, I like that lineup. Just, I don't know why I laid out cards like that, but that lineup <laughs> of characters looks really good. I'm, I'm going to run with that. Um, yeah, I think this, um, this set uh really reinforces black pips i think as a as a weapon i don't know i feel like people were treating them kind of as a novelty before um but i think this set really adds some like, devastating them. what's that i think it kind of solidifies them in this way yeah i mean there's some really dangerous like black pipped cards in this set um not least of which is the fusion borer card which is a single black pip that's a weapon gives you pierce three um and plus three attack um you have to scrap it after battle but it did its job it gave you <laughs> three pierce <laughs> um then they had the grav inhibitor which is just a black pip piercing blaster um the the new white and black pip card hit and run i love it i want to throw it in like every deck that, <laughs> that i've tried to build so far um i've been looking for an excuse to use it um so it's an action white and black pip um flip one of your characters from bot mode to alt mode uh and move one damage counter from it to an enemy in alt mode uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm all about uh, all the decks I build. I tend to want to flip all my characters all the time, so that just helps me flip a character. And if I can also move a damage, that's even better. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely. I feel black is going to be um, something to contend with from here on out. Um, they definitely added a lot of depth to the the black pips this set. Um, personally, how I feel about it, uh, I I do like it. I do like that they. Well, I'm coming in from a different perspective, I'm looking at it from a collector's point of view than as a player's. So I like that they have like brawn gears. A lot of these G1 characters back, you know, well not back, but but like introduced into this set. Um, I. Uh, I they brought Tide Masters. I'm really pleased that they somehow worked that in. I didn't think that was ever going to happen. Yep. I was, I, mechanically, I was like, how's this going to work? Um, um, the one thing that, as a collector, that is going to infuriate me 
but it furiates me now a little bit, is that with Way 4, I was able to buy two booster boxes and I was able to miss out. I had every all the cards except for maybe two super rares, which eventually down the line I will like try to collect. You know, like maybe I'll, like, maybe I'll save up and I'll buy one and then the next one and so forth. With seven super rares, plus the way they, even with two booster boxes, even not even super rares. I mean, I mean, of course, the chance of just getting two is just as great as it itself. But trying to get five, that means if they go between 50 to 100 pop, it's going to be a while before I try to get all of them. But also, um, even like some mm. of the regular cards, there were some cards, even then I was still missing. I was missing some of the um, stratagem cards. Uh, like I, like uh, I, I didn't realize I was missing uh, six guns uh, stratagem until um, uh, Bob mentioned it. Like, hey, you should combine that with, with Optimus. Like, yeah, that'll be great. Wait, wait a second. I don't have that one. Um, <laughs> there's little, little things yeah. like that. And it's weird. It's like, wow. There I'm were missing. a lot of rare stratagems. Yeah. <laughs> there were a lot of rare stratagems. And Ten of them. Well, that's a lot when your chances of getting a rare stratagem is really small <laughs> yeah and um if i was to be if i was to be a little nitpicky about wave five um there's certain cards i'm like okay why i like I'm, I'm trying to think why like like um wind blades wind blades um stratagem i it's it's okay but i just can't imagine that being useful you know, unless you really like Windblade, if you really like the character and like, all right, I want to, I want to make a cool Windblade deck just because I like Windblade a lot. Okay, that would help you. But like in a tournament level, I'm like, why? I don't know. Maybe I'm just being really picky about it. But yeah, um, I mean, it does give her plus three defense on both both her modes, um, which is kind of gross. I mean, having three defense on both sides is beastly. Um, but yeah. There are other thirteen star characters, uh, OPBL, <laughs> that <laughs> could be more useful than Windblade. Yeah. My favorite uh, battle card um, is Belligerence, and um, I'm not surprised to see mm -hmm. that that battle card doing well. Um, well, not doing well, but like being pricey. Uh, on the market uh it just so happens i was checking one uh another website where i was like oh what how much is going for it's like 10 bucks for one of the cards which is so far the most expensive way five card or battle card that i've seen so far but uh yeah i like it it's 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 it um it's making it's giving me some ideas about about a blue deck i'm, I'm trying to i think i mentioned before i want to make a blue truck deck and then i realized that yeah i like mm -hmm. brawn a lot i think brawn i, I want to work brawn with something but i couldn't just for some reason, with gears, um, with oh, who's the other out 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 back? Um, I just yeah. I don't know. For some reason, it just seemed boring to me. It's like okay, this is even with a with a bat with having battle cards that are specifically for trucks. Just for me, it just seemed boring. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna think of something else to go with that. Um, um, but yeah, I like I like belligerence. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else about Wave Five that I liked or disliked. Uh, but well, Braun is uh, what, what's he? Five stars. Yeah. Um, six if you use the uh, the stratagem he has. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could go back to Wave Two and pair him with Nova Star, and then figure out what your third character is, because mm. she has the added benefit of being a car. So once you're using team up tactics, that's you know gross and she's a car and a truck so yeah so I, potentially if you put the third character as a car you'd have two cars and two trucks in the yeah. deck the that one might thing, be a way to go <laughs> one thing i was disappointed with was with roadbuster um i was thinking oh he'll be pretty cool to make maybe a truck deck around and then i looked at his car like wait a second he doesn't have a <laughs> truck he doesn't have any vehicle um yeah he's just a wrecker and a leader yeah and i'm <laughs> like oh well that's okay all right i, I just have to think of a different uh, something different with him but that that really caught me yeah. a little off guard a little bit i wasn't expecting that i figured every transformer has at least one type of mode like vehicle mode or ultimate mode that's in there and they're listening i don't know i like in this wave that it's not all about building a 25 star character deck so to speak 
you want to leave room for a stratagem. You want to leave room for uh, for a star card. You you want to do something a little outside of the box. I think two cards in particular for stratagems and characters stand out to myself. Uh, and I was just talking to Jimmy about this the other night was mm -hmm. for both gears and crankcase. Um, I think through the first couple of waves here, first few waves that um, cards with just a static ability are just seem to be so gross and so powerful um, in the game state. And I think that Gears' stratagem, um, which is shut it, basically shutting down um, opponents from opponents' card triggers, um, I think is going to be super powerful. So I think that we're going to see Gears in some of those competitive decks. I think he's going to make it into um, a lot of that style of gameplay, similar to how Flame War kind of crept in there uh, to a lot of decks. Um, and then I think Crankcase has, that, has a similar potential there where you can't scrap cards out of uh, your opponent's hand. I think that those could both be characters with stratagems that uh, they're middle of the pack because they're both seven star characters. Their stratagem makes them eight star. It makes it eight stars that you're committing to your deck at that point. Um, and I think that just those static abilities are gonna just gonna creep in there, and they're gonna find a way to just be devastating uh, in some of these builds that we're gonna see moving forward here. I don't know. I you said you were a big fan of the belligerence card. Um... And I was also I liked the uh, the inverse of that, which was the end hostilities, the secret action that did the the opposite of that, um, changed all the oranges to blues. Um, I thought that was a pretty cool. Plus, I like the pictures on both of those cards. Mm. I, I think it's Metroplex, is it? Or, yeah, I don't uh, even know oh, who it is. Oh, or is it Fortress Maximus walking <laughs> across the battlefield? <laughs> It's just, I like a lot of the art in this wave. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Really, the, I, I, was never really a fan, I was never a fan of the battle cards art. Like, I always looked at the, the other waves. I'm like, okay, it's okay. You know, like, it's not horrible. It's just, I mean, compared to the yeah. character cards, it's just blew it out of the water. But I thought the art in this, in wave five for battle cards was way better. It just, I don't know. I'm not sure what they, I don't know. Maybe it's pick better, better scenes, better... I don't know. It just to yeah. me it seemed to work a lot better. Um, I haven't tried to do anything with it yet, but I really want to do something with that hand-to-hand -hand combat card. That seems like a really interesting action. Um, it's a blue pip, but only for melee characters. Um, you, it's an action. You choose one of your characters, and when it attacks this turn, it doesn't have a weapon. It gets plus three attack until end of battle, and you scrap all of the defender's weapons. Um, that seems really potentially powerful uh, uh, to me. Um, so I definitely like to do something uh, with that card. Uh, I mentioned that I really liked the hit and run card, the new white and black pip. Mission briefing I found was really useful. I used it in um, in that Skull Smasher deck. Um, regenerative core was also useful. I think that's at least one of those is going to go in any deck I build. Uh, I found a uh, scouting mission to also be useful. Um, that's a blue black pip action, do one damage to any character, and its owner draws two cards. Um, so I was using that in the horrible deck to deal damage to horrible. Um, get to draw two cards and then flip horrible and move the damage off of him. Hmm. And it was a black pip, so <laughs> it turned it into a two damage. Um, uh, any character cards? Yeah, I definitely think there's... Yeah, go ahead. Is there any uh, uh, battle, um, character cards that you felt like, well, that's your favorite? Like It's like your favorite either because of the character or because it's just a really powerful card? So... I really like, um, I happened to get uh, Windsweeper in the first box that I opened. 
So I'm a huge fan of his art. Um, I'm a huge fan of him being a plane in both modes, um, bot mode and alt mode. Um, I love his ability, his move move damage ability. Um, I did try and build an initial uh, planes deck around just throwing as much damage as possible um, with Windsweeper and the other planes. Um, so I was a big fan of Windsweeper. Once I built the Skull Smasher deck, I became a fan of Skull Smasher. Because <laughs> uh, we, after we, after Bobby played against it, we talked about it, uh, the gross things that you could do with uh, Skull Smasher. Because I didn't even really utilize his, um, his alt mode ability of having Pierce 3 against Autobots. Um, so I think there's some gross things you can do there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of a lot of stuff to explore in this new set. Like I haven't even, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface <laughs> of this new set. I haven't even looked at Tidal Wave yet. I'm excited to build a deck about that, but there's so many other decks I want to build in the way before I <laughs> before I can get there. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I, I just got Tidal Wave on Friday, I, um, and I was looking at the card. And I'm like, "Oh, this is some interesting stuff you could do with this with this, with Tidal Wave." I can see why um, Drew made a deck around this character because it's 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 um, I don't want to say gimmicky. Usually, that has a bad connotation, but it's uh, but it's, it's I think you can have some fun with that with the, with, the, with Tidal Wave with whatever uh, characters you choose to like uh, uh, drop out of them. Yeah, Bobby, what are your favorite characters? You didn't say your favorite characters. <laughs> I, I'm still exploring that. Right now, it's kind of <laughs> the first... Uh, well, first impressions. What are your first impression favorite characters? Um, I really like Pounce. That was the first super rare that I got. I think it was Pounce. Um, so, he's a beast. Maybe that's why it led me to this beast deck. Um, of of this new faction, um, I really like his stratagem. I think it's really unique. Uh, I think it pairs really well with, say, um, Sergeant Skywarp uh, to be able to go and grab two secret actions from your scrap pile, so that you're lined up for a, a huge a huge turn there. Even if you're playing like a blue deck. Uh, just really loving his ability. Looking at the top three cards of your deck, you can put a secret action into your hand. He's got three defense. Um, he seems like he's going to be fierce. Uh, I, I really like that beast faction. I guess I guess the, the beast faction to me is the new Insecticons, and that's the first box that I ever opened in Wave 1. I got the whole Insecticon team lineup. I <laughs> From Scrapnel right down the line of everybody, and and that's that the faction that I that I fell in love with, and uh, I don't know maybe the same things happening here in Wave Five. Uh, Pounce was the first super rare that I got out of this wave. He was a beast, and then I really kind of fell in love with uh, the beast characters, uh, what they could do. Uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see what they start doing with that faction because I don't think there are any battle cards yet that that modify the beasts at all yet so yeah, i'll be interested that, to see wh what what goes forward with that i think there was like that one way for card i think wasn't there like if a beast mode was still in or maybe not maybe i'm just thinking because eight faces on the cover of uh, the uh the, the art for that yeah maybe. i'm using the two um okay oh and uh, i guess my Mine's is a tie between Brawn. Um, I thought for I, Brawn and Night Racer, just because they're they're like five star cards, and that you could do yep. you could do a lot you could do a lot with them, and and and, um, and uh, I think and I like that they're making uh, car, uh, character cards that have less stars still as important as characters. So sometimes you have there's a cool ability that. Uh, character has, I'm like, oh, I want to use it, but it's like 12 stars, 15 stars, and I'm like, oh, I want to, 
do something, but I feel like my hands are tied. Yeah. Um, but uh, mm. so those two I like. I think there's a lot of good possibilities with those two. 